ACE inhibitor induced cough. And ACE inhibitors are essentially very commonly used medications for hypertension. And ACE stands for angiotensin converting enzyme and they inhibit that enzyme. And I would like to give you a few of the names. The good news is they all end in pril, P-R-I-L. So you have captopril, enalapril, lisinopril, which is a very commonly prescribed medication, ramapril, and also a more newer one known as benazapril. Now these medications are given most commonly for high blood pressure, hypertension, and sometimes they're also prescribed for CHF, congestive heart failure. Now the side effect is really what we're talking about in this video, and that side effect is cough, and in particular a dry cough. And it can happen in as many as 20% of patients that are placed on ACE inhibitors, which is a very high number, so this can often lead to discontinuation of that drug. There's one other side effect I quickly wanted to mention that can happen, and it's angioedema. Now, to understand why this is happening, I wanted to draw a diagram that illustrates the mechanism of action of an ACE inhibitor. So first we have angiotensinogen, and that is converted to angiotensin, and in particular angiotensin 1, and that is accomplished with the help of renin. And renin, of course, comes from the kidney. Then angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2. And that is accomplished with ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme. Now, angiotensin 1 later goes to the angiotensin 1 receptor, and that later leads to the production of aldosterone. Now, this is the hormone that increases sodium and water reabsorption, and that results in increased blood pressure. So when everything's working normally, this is the cascade. What we have is a medication known as angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. And what that does is it blocks this step right here. So you don't go on to get the aldosterone, so the opposite happens. Instead of the blood pressure going up, the blood pressure actually starts to go down. But there's a separate cascade on the other side that's also affected. You have a pathway involving a molecule known as bradykinin. And normally, it breaks down into a metabolite with the help of angiotensin converting enzyme. But when you have an ACE inhibitor being used, that blocks this step also. So when that step is blocked, bradykinin accumulates. And it's the accumulation of this bradykinin that causes the cough and the angioedema. So this is the important step here to remember as to what is the reason you're getting this cough. So how do you treat this if this does indeed happen? Basically, you have to discontinue the ACE inhibitor and switch to a different class of medication. And one very common uh, class of medication that's prescribed if this scenario occurs is a medication known as an ARB. And an ARB stands for angiotensin receptor blocker. And this angiotensin receptor blocker blocks this step right here. So it's involved in the same uh, pathway, but it doesn't uh, interfere with the bradykinin pathway. So it doesn't lead to cough in the same way that an ACE inhibitor would. So now let's take a look at a few vignettes. 53-year-old widowed woman comes to the office for a health maintenance exam. She is a new patient who has a history of hypertension. She says that she has no complaints except for a cough that began to notice about four months ago. She denies nasal discharge, she denies a tickle in her throat, frequent throat clearing, heartburn, sensation of regurgitation, fever, sputum protection, cigarette smoking, illicit, illegal drug use, sexual activity, occupational exposures, and any other symptoms associated with respiratory infection. She says that the cough is not seasonal or associated with wheezing. 
temperature is normal, blood pressure is 135 over 90, pulse is 70, respirations are 14. Physical exam is unremarkable. Most appropriate next step is. So she basically has a cough and she's denied every other possible uh, etiology or associated symptom. So what's the simplest thing that you could do among all these tests? Well, an EKG obviously has a cost, so does an x-ray, bronchoscopy is very invasive, and pulmonary function test is also a um, test that involves some cost. The simplest thing and the most appropriate thing is ask her about her medications because she could be on an ACE inhibitor and she does have a history of hypertension, so it's very possible that she does indeed have that on her medication list and that's what's causing the cough. And finally, a 54-year-old man is admitted to the hospital with chest pain based on serial enzyme determinations and EKG. He is diagnosed with a myocardial infarction. He is hospitalized for three days and recovers, but left ventricular dysfunction remains. He is prescribed several medications on discharge. A week later, he complains to his doctor about a dry, non-productive, persistent cough. Which of the following meds is most likely responsible for the appearance of this symptom? Well, among all these listed, the one that is the ACE inhibitor is the one that ends in pril, in particular captopril, and that's the most likely cause of his cough.